after watching this video, you'll love session view. It is actually super simple. So let's get started. This view is probably what you see when you first time launch Tableton. It can be daunting, it can be difficult, but once you know all the panels, what does what, you'll really catch it quick. And I'm telling you, you'll really know the software after watching this video and you love session view. So now let's talk about what do we see on the screen. So first things on the left hand side, we have the browser. Browser is basically for browsing your files, looking up the instruments or loops or samples or effects, everything, every file is here. It should be linked here so you can easily access it. We have nice filters. We have the search panel, which is very useful. That's basically the browser. The info view. Info view is really cool, especially when you're starting out. It will show you the tips on or info about what's what, like a help panel, like an assistant. So if you don't know what's what, let's say, what is that button? It says play button, click to start playback. And then you also have some uh, shortcuts that say keyboard shortcut space, toggle play and stop, shift to space, continue playback from stopped position. This is the info, super important. And underneath here, where it says drop an instrument or sample here, we have a device view or clip view. So you can switch between one view and another or use shift tab to switch between these two. Super important, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. And two main workflows of the software of the Ableton Live is the session view and arrangement view. We can watch it here or just press tab to switch between one and another. Arrangement view is more likely the one you're most familiar with from any other DW use like GarageBand or Logic Pro or Cubase. So you have the horizontal timeline and if we press play it's gonna play our playhead through and uh, launch all the instruments or samples that we have collected and arranged here. That's why it's called arrangement view. But session view is slightly different. It has these kind of empty fields, rectangulars. These are called clip slots where we can put clips onto into their the slots. And we have some vertical lines which are called tracks. When we have here two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks, and we also have some send and return tracks, so reverb delay in this case, but we can have more. And the main track where all the sound is combined together just to properly mix it and possibly master it at the end. And that's the main output. So let's go back for a second. There are two types of tracks that we will be using MIDI track an audio track. Think of it like uh, an instrument. So we have the MIDI, two MIDI instruments and two audio tracks. Audio track means that you can literally record into it either from the microphone or guitar or put the sample in it and it will be played with the session view. And MIDI track is just track that will hold information, MIDI information, so the notes you play on your keyboard, MIDI keyboard, or you can type them in in a piano roll. And also the MIDI will contain an instrument like a device or any other plugin that makes sound. So basically you can have notes and swap the instruments, but the notes will stay the same. So when we double click on any of these clip slots, the little rectangular clip will appear with the little play button. And that's basically how we launch the clip and stop using this stop button or this stop button, or we stop everything here. And now we have the mini clip. So we can see what we have here. We have some notes we can program. Let's double click, we have C, uh, we have D and we have E and if you play this nothing's gonna happen because you didn't play any instrument. So let's quickly find a piano. I have one here. If I drop this onto the MIDI track we will hear a piano. Okay, so if you see these are these two views that I was talking about. So this is the device view where we see the grand piano instrument. We can add some effects later on and this is the clip view so we can see the MIDI, we can modify the MIDI, stretch it, duplicate it or do any changes to the MIDI information. And these notes can be transferred to any other a different instrument copied over or manipulated as, as, as much as you like. Let's try to use the audio track and we will find some kind of samples, loop sample, let's say, I don't know. So if you go to the packs, you're probably gonna have this one called the core library. And in core library, you will have some samples, loops, drums, full drums. And the first one from the top would be 80s beat. We can listen to it as, as it plays, so that's why the browser is really handy and really helpful. We have some different ones. They have these BPM written on the samples, which is useful, but it's not super, super important at the moment. Nice. Anything interesting for me? Okay, this is cool, 123 BPM. Let's uh, drag it over to this audio track, let's say this one. Okay, so now we have it. We see the sample that consists of these waveforms. And if you play it, 
that's what we get. Okay, cool, perfect. So we have this sample. We can we can just move it anywhere else, and that will be very useful a little later. And on the other one, we can have a different one. Let's try even even on the same, we can have this one. Let's say let's try a different one. See, we come in a little bit hot and a little bit loud. So let's use the mixer to fix it. So we're gonna go down in volume here just to make sure we're not clipping or we're not going over the zero, which is too loud, it's gonna clip in a not too nice way. Okay, now it's much better. We can always reset this uh, level meter by clicking on it. Same with this one. Okay, so I have two samples on the other track, perfect. What about MIDI? Let's uh, program some drums ourselves. That's gonna be very quick. So we, if we go to the drums, you probably have some drum kits. In my case, I already found the 808 core kit, and then if I just hover it over, transfer it on this MIDI track, it's gonna appear like that. So now we can use our MIDI keyboard just to trigger the note. Or we can use just the piano roll. So we can double click to create a clip. Let's stop this one here. We don't want to listen to that. And now let's find the kick here. I'm gonna open that a little bit. So let's find the bass drum. So we have the bass drum. Let's program it on the first beat, second, third, and fourth. And let's play it. Okay, snare drum on the second and fourth. Super simple. And uh, we can change it to hand clap. Okay, cool. Then let's add some close hi hat on every second. Maybe here, maybe here. No. Okay. Okay. That's cool, that's one of them. Now what we can do, interesting, is to copy this clip. This clip just basically holds the MIDI information. I'll show you one trick. If you put the piano back again on a different MIDI track, and if we copy this over or move this over to the grand piano, we're gonna hear... A bit scary music here. But okay, that's, these are notes that we program for drums, but these are now triggering the piano. That's why it sounds so weird. Actually, I like it. Now let's go back, let's uh, keep it back on the drum kit. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, modify it slightly. Let's copy it over using Alt or Option and drag it to the new, or just press Command D to duplicate. That's also a very handy shortcut. Now let's add more uh, hi-hats. Let's add hi-hats every, every bit. Let's delete these and let's create one, two. Let's highlight these two and press Command D to duplicate. Now let's play the second clip. Okay, and now on the third one, let's copy it over again. We want to have it double the size, so we press just uh, duplicate. It's gonna have the double length basically, but we want to change it over slightly. So let's use like opened hi-hat on this beat. And on this beat, let's listen to this now. Okay. Cool, I like it. We can try to play it com in combination with the Tech House drum loop. Maybe too much, but yeah, you get the idea. Now let's get rid of all the other tracks that we don't really need at the moment, and let's make a little bass line. So let's go to the Drift Instruments. Drift, you probably have Drift. If you, let's say, click here in the browser, in the filters, not brass, but bass. You have some bass sounds. Let's listen to a few. Okay, I like this one. Let's move it over here. And now we can use our keyboard to play. Let's go down a couple octaves. Maybe here. We can try to record now if we have this track active. We have these red button here, which is called arm for recording. It means that if I press the record, we will actually indeed record this track. So the, this instrument, if I uncheck that, it just switch to stop buttons, which means that we can't do anything. So let's uh, click that. Let's arm it for recording. Let's, let's try to record this with the metronome. Why not? Let's get the metronome here and let's start here. Okay, 
maybe not so perfect, but if you see these nodes, they may be not 100% aligned on the grid. What we can do is a super cool trick. Let's Command A, so to select all the nodes and press Command U or Control U to quantize. They're gonna be quantized to the next 16 bar grid line. Okay, perfect. Now let's try to add some kind of pad to this uh, baseline. So let's find a pad here in the browser with the drift instruments or any other VST that you might have. Let's uh, listen to a few of them. Okay, I like this one. I'll use a single note of it probably. We're just gonna make it a little bit longer. Let's double click to create a clip and then let's uh, stretch it over a little bit. So let's press duplicate. Two times we're gonna have eight bar long. Okay, cool. So I guess the A note will be good for it because it will just sound good, I guess. Let's stretch it over for eight bars and let's listen to it now. Okay, I like it. We can switch off the metronome, but I would actually want it to be an octave higher. So let's press shift up to move it one octave higher. Let's play it again. Okay, cool. Let's add the Tech House drums. Okay, cool. We've created some of the clips now. Uh, we'll try to probably manipulate them a little bit because, okay, we have the drums uh, and two lanes. We have bass and a pad. Let's say we don't want to add any more instruments for the moment, but uh, what are these clips? Why they are in such different positions? So we can play this one. Okay, these are different drums. These are different drums. These are slightly different drums. So so we have these three. So let's 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 figure out why is it all four? Why do we need it? So first things first is for basically playing live or uh, coming up with ideas. So we can mix and match these different clips. Let's say I want to try with these percussions here. Which is also super cool, okay? And I want to pair these two because they sound good together. So let's move this here on one line. And this is important because you see, we have it highlighted throughout the end to the main track. And on the main track, we have these clips, which are actually not the clips because these are called scenes. And scenes work like that. If you press this play here, it will play the whole scene, whatever's on the same line, like here. Let's try it now. Okay, if we press the second scene, what happens? We get to hear only this instrument, this drum kit, because all of the other ones, if you uncheck this, they have the stop button, which means they will stop playing from the previous scene. Okay, but what do we do now if we want some kind of instrument just to continue playing? We will just uh, right click here, for example, and then we press remove the stop button, which means that it will not stop playing this pulse pad. Let's try. Okay, cool. Now we understand it. So let's try to arrange something up. Let's say we want to start with just the drums. Okay, let's just the drums, so this one here. Without anything, let's press stop here just to stop all the clips from playing. Second scene will have the more complicated drums with this clicks and then Okay, and then let's let's move on. Let's uh, continue. Let's keep this from stopping. Remove stop button, and let's add the baseline here. But let's not add the the pad yet. Let's add the pad at the very end. Remove this stop button. So now, when we go through these scenes, we'll have a little structure. So we can even call them. We can click here on the first scene, press Command R or Control R, and name it like I say, Intro. In the second one, Intro. To, and we don't need to double click or unclick or enter, we can just press tap, it's gonna jump to the next scene and let's call it like first, first A and then let's call the last one chorus, just for an example. And now when we play these scenes, let's listen to how it sounds now. If you find this a little bit confusing, we can always delete it or change it, no problem at all. Verse A. 
everything is nicely quantized because we have this global quantization. It's going to quantize the launch of the scene to the equal beats, so we're not playing out of uh, out of sync. Okay, now we can mix it slightly, we can move things, like this is the mixer for the clips or for the tracks actually, so we can make them louder or more quiet if we need, we can move them, pan them to left or right, let's listen to. We can pan these here, we can pan these drums here, which normally you wouldn't probably do. Let's move this here, let's move this here, and let's start try these other buttons. So this will switch off the instrument, it will still play, but it's not audible. And the solo button will basically just solo that particular instrument. You can use command or control to solo two at the same time, which is actually super useful sometimes. And now we have some more uh, things to talk about. So in that, let's say we have, we have this bass. We see the MIDI information, we can of course uh, move it over, that's fine. And we have this drift synthesizer here in the device view. We switch over from one to another, either clicking or by pressing shift tab. Super cool, super easy. Now, here we can add some effects. It says drop on all the effects here. So if you go here to the effects, all the effects, and we have, let's say, uh, delay. Let's say, let's add a delay. And let's listen to just the bass now. Let's solo it. Okay, it gets a little bit uh, muddy. We can add just a tiny bit. Ping pong delay. That starts to sound super cool. Maybe too much. Maybe a bit a bit too much. Okay, but you get the idea. We can add some effects. We can add, let's say, saturator. I've just pressed Control F to find quickly, and it's here. Let's uh, switch off the delay. Let's play with the saturation. Okay, let's listen how it sounds in the mix. That's a little bit of the character. Let's add the delay at the end. Okay, this delay doesn't really work. Let's move delay to the pad. We just moved it over. Let's listen to just the pad only. Thanks, nice. But if we go too much, we only hear the delay. We don't hear the original sound. So that's where these send and return tracks come in handy. So these are by default set to reverb delay, but you can create any other combination of uh, effects in these tracks. And they would also always want to be 100% wet because we, if we use these knobs here, let's say, let's push it over to the max on A, which A is stands for reverb in this case. Now when we listen to the sound, it will go through the reverb, but at the same time we're going to hear the original sound as well. Now let's uh, check what happens to the B. It just adds the delay. We can change the delay to the ping pong delay, which I like the most, I guess. And there we can modify how much of the signal we want to send to the effects. Super simple. And on the main track, we can combine some effects that will merge our sound together and make it sound nice. So EQ, compression, or uh, limiting just to make it louder. Let's, uh, let's actually do this now. So let's add limiter. And limiter will protect us from getting a signal which is too loud. We have the ceiling minus one. Let's go minus one and a half, let's say. And then we can play the whole sound together. See, it starts to clip a little bit, so it's protecting us from not getting too loud signal. Yeah, we can make it a little bit more quiet. So now we created a little structure here. We have the intro, we have some verse. Let's say this is uh, some kind of project that you want to move on, and you probably want to move on further just to create it and finish it, make the full song or full beat out of these clips. So what you can do now is you have to kind of transfer them here into the rain preview and work on them further. But how can you do it? You have to watch this video next. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. That really helps.